but definitely an advantage is its simplicity to configure. And actually, RIP only requires that you run a couple of commands to get it off the ground. From global configuration mode, what you will do is run the command router RIP. And what this does is changes you to a new prompt, which is called config router, otherwise known as the router configuration prompt. And from there, all you have to do is to choose to inject the appropriate network IDs into the RIP process. Now, it's very important to remember that RIP is classful. It does not understand subnetting. It only understands a single subnet mask. It doesn't care about anything beyond the classful boundary. Now, we know about IP addresses already that are classful boundary. It indicates where the cutoff is between the network portion and the host portion by default in the class IP address. In this case, we have a class IP address, class B, that is 172.16. That's the classful boundary. That identifies the network portion at the classful level for class B. Everything else that we might enter is completely disregarded. Even if we enter information, it doesn't take it. If we had three networks, let's say 172.16.10, 20, and 30, the router would allow us to enter it, but it would automatically truncate this information down to 172.16.0.0 because it doesn't understand anything past the classful boundary. That's a very, very important component for you to remember because anytime you're dealing with, especially exams and things like this, or you must duplicate actual processes as you perform simulations, you need to realize that it must be entered correctly on the exam simulators. Stop after the classful boundary and put zeros for the rest. Same goes for the second entry that I have here, network 10. Even if network 10 was subnetted using a 24-bit mask, I still cannot enter anything beyond the 10 and expect RIP to understand it. It will go ahead and drop off any number after the classful boundary and enter a zero in my configuration. So that's going to be incredibly important for the configuration. And I'll prove that to you in the lab in a few minutes when we actually configure RIP on our 3800 router.